coffee. Oh right? yes, and feel free to have some chocolate. You're like very detailed and it seems like it runs throughout everything that you're doing. I mean, this is like I was saying before, this is a microcosm of your personality. I mean, do you find that even in your process of making coffee, it's very much your process of doing everything that you do? Totally. I hope this room isn't too messy. Oh, this is, is it, an awesome. Is, is, is this, oh. this going to be embarrassing because no, it's too messy? No, this is great. I'm looking at all the stuff that you have here. A lot of analog stuff, a lot of, obviously you're just so completely passionate about music. What got you interested to the web world, switching it over to digital? So the way this happened was, this, this, all this old stuff came out of the web and super modern stuff. And, and what happened was I was interested in being able to do cover songs. For example, the song, Can the Circle Be Unbroken? It was a classic folk song. The version that we know is from 1935 mm -hmm. by the Carter family, by, uh, by A.P. Carter. A.P. Carter took these kind of things and, and crafted them into something that was better by borrowing and remixing. So then the question is, what's the copyright on that? Like, can you, can you cover can the circle be unbroken? How did WebJ kind of come from all of this, all of this searching, all of this, how did that culminate? So WebJ was about making playlists of materials you find in the web, being a bin rat, combing the web for neat little things. So for example, I found a diagnostic sound for people who are trying to figure out problems with their hard drives. The name of this sound was reed head failure. You know what I mean? So there's a platter spinning awesome. and there's a reed head on it and people had recorded it so they could so tech support right. could say, what is that? And it was this wonderful sound. You know, so, so I put that in a playlist. Right. And it sounded wonderful. It was next to uh, some Fortet. But all that stuff was discovering how much fun my friends and I could have on the open web. Where do you think all of this is going to be going? I mean, what do you think needs to actually happen in order to have that feeling that you can just create openly? The big change is that the law has to become more defined. So the way that, that the entire ecosystem of internet music works right now is you really never know if you're infringing, and you probably are, but it probably doesn't matter. So people will kind of go along, do whatever they're doing, file sharing, MP3 blogging, writing software, until the point when major rights holders feel like they have something to gain, and then you'll get sued and you'll enter this bizarre world that makes no sense at all. I'm not saying file sharing has to be legalized. I'm saying that what's legal has to be clear and, and, and well-defined. And in a lot of ways, that's what Creative Commons brings to the table. Whenever things are fuzzy, the internet breaks down. Somebody's got to pick up the phone and call. Hi, mm -hmm. Bob, it's Jim. Can I play your song at my disco dance party next week? And as soon as Bob has to call Jim, things are broken. It's not internet-y. Mm -hmm. Here's a, here's a f uh, one, two, three, four. Here's a five bar line. It just makes no sense at all. It's interesting when you actually point it out at first glance, you're like, well, what's the difference? And then all of a sudden you start pointing things out and it makes so much sense. And it also is just kind of enlightening when you say it's like this is legal this is legal where the illegal one is the actual one that people have taken time with passion and care behind it and and that not many people can access webj was actually acquired by yahoo so can you tell us a bit about that so um when, when webj was was acquired by yahoo it was um the result of a vision by the by the general manager of yahoo music that playlists were the future webj was actually going towards a radically different concept. It was going to totally decentralize and just become uh, a tool that you uh, added to any web page to make that page into a playlist. The first generation of social media stuff, uh, Delicious and Flickr, and, and then WebJ was part of that little thing, was about you come to us and everything happens in this one little space. But the new design was going to be you make any playlist you want anywhere and we're going to make it work and we're going to add all this sharing and discovery and cooperation uh, to the ecosystem as a whole, no matter where you do it. So, so that was going to be WebJ version 2, mm -hmm. and that was never released. That got a lot of mind share in, in Yahoo, and we got some real investment, and got to build it into this thing that became known as Yahoo Media Player. The answer to what happened with WebJ is it kind of diffused outwards, it became a much more clearly defined slice of functionality. Mm -hmm. There's no need for buddy lists and this new way of thinking, or playlist editing, or all this other stuff that's redundant with the world. Tell us about XSPF or SPIF. XSPF is a playlist format. My friends and I were making playlists, and we found that the technology to do that 
was, was really broken. So out of that, myself and some other people worked on this new playlist format that we thought would fix those problems. It must be 40 people who contributed to XSPF. And it took a couple years, every weekend sitting down working on the spec. You can use XSPF to share data. So for example, at last.fm, you can export your preferences, your mm -hmm. scrabbled data as a XSPF file. And oh, then, really? Yeah, and, and, cool. and, and people have hooked that into all kinds of other services. One guy wrote a lookup via web search and plays it in Tumblr, in a Tumblr awesome. page. In my mind, as you're saying it, it seems like, did, did, did then XSPF kind of, you know, take off where WebJ kind of left off? Totally. Rather than receiving taste from you know, certain canonical sources, it's about talking about the world and expressing yourself right. and going on a journey. <laughs>